Hello everyone and uh, welcome to another Europa Barbarorum 2 campaign. Now um, I thought that uh, there was a faction that gets a lot of short shrift and that faction would be the Saka and uh, it's it's probably one of my favorite factions in both EB1 and 2 uh, because um, you know you start out as a uh, just a nomadic faction heavy cavalry horse archers things like that but then as the game goes on uh, you get access to very interesting units your roster expands a lot you get good infantry and uh, you know what I thought let's play as the Saka so let's do this And uh, the Saka are listed indeed as uh, nigh impossible. Um, I would say they are um, easier. Uh, again, similar to uh, Hayastan, they are easier in EB2 than in EB1. But in EB2, they have their own problems. I would say it's a more difficult campaign than uh, Hayastan's, all things considered. But here's the nice uh, intro movie about the Saka. So, of course, the Saka Rauka, a lot of people, I think, um, kind of ignore them because uh, it's hard to find information about if you type in Saka Rauka, you're going to have a bit of a tough time finding information. But uh, basically, there were a bunch of uh, Iranian tribes in um, Central Asia. Um, uh, from the uh, from before the Achaemenid period and they were mostly Iranian tribes there were also Tocharians and other kinds of people in the area but um, there were the Saka Hauma Varga the Saka Tigra Chauda and there were also the Saka Rauka and uh, these are men these tribes are mentioned in various sources the Achaemenids mentioned the Tigra Chauda and the Hauma Varga so you do see the Hauma Varga in, the, in a, one of the provinces east of Bactria in EB1 and EB2 as well as a minor faction. But uh, the Saka Rauka essentially were uh, one of these groups and they were nomadic. And uh, they got pushed by the Ueji invasions. The Ueji were defeated. And then the Ueji pushed the Saka out of parts of Central Asia. And the Saka... Um, conquered Bactria from the Greco-Bactrian kingdom and then they eventually moved into India where they conquered um, the Indo-Greek kingdoms. So uh, essentially this is a very cool campaign indeed. So basically um, you want to go for... Uh, I like going for historical expansion so, um, of course, just like in EB1, uh, the Saka start out with this uh, one province in the very northeast corner of the map, which in um, EB1 is called Sayavuga, and in uh, EB2 is called Sakastan. Um, but uh, essentially, you start out with a big horde at the beginning. So you've got this horde, essentially. And uh, you have a couple of spies and a diplomat, or one spy and a diplomat. And uh, you have a couple of options here. So the obvious option that uh, seems like the developers want you to go for is to go for Chach. But, um, you know, and Chach is the Kingdom of Kang. If you look up Kingdom of Kang, you'll find information about this area. But, uh, oh, so if you want to find more information about the Saka, as depicted in EB2, you want to uh, look up Indo-Scythians. Indo-Scythians. So in any case, um, okay. I'm not going to go for Chach, because if you um, move your spy over here, then you see there's Alexandria Escate, 
right here. And then behind Alexandria, you have Sogdia, which is controlled by the uh, Bactrian kingdom. And um, Bactria is very rich. So Bactria itself is uh, right around here. So actually, instead of going for Chach, because if you go for Chach, then you also kind of expose yourself to the Parthians, who if the Parthians take uh, this settlement here right, right in the north, to the north of them, then uh, they have a border with you and they can attack you. Uh, so in the beginning of the game, your economy is not so great. So if we look at the, um, yeah, uh, profits negative 4,000, not what we want to see. You have you start out with a bunch of um, uh, rebel provinces next to you. So you have this one with just like a Saka camp again, and then you have a couple of towns here, Tocharian towns here near the Tarim Basin. But uh, I don't care about those. I want Alexandria. Marikanda and Bactra and Oscobara as well. Alexandria on the Oxus. So those are the cities I want because those are the cities that are going to pull me out of debt quickly. And that's what I've got to do. So I'm going to put all my forces together. And we're going to go... Um... We're going to go get Bactria. That's going to be my line of attack from the start here. So at the beginning, I want to take Alexandria uh, because I don't want the Bactrians to get it. Uh, what can I, what should I construct here? Uh, I should construct some farming just for the uh, income and population growth bonus. And uh, other than that, Oh, the other good thing about uh, the Saka is that at the beginning, um, yeah, you can mostly recruit just uh, cavalry. But you do have access to your cataphracts from the beginning. These are mean cataphracts. They're not quite as good as, um, like, for example, I think the Armenian general's bodyguard is slightly better. I think the general's bodyguard has 16 attack and this one has 15. But these guys are nasty uh, with their 30 charge bonus especially. But you know what? The Saka archers are also nasty because you have seven missile attack, whereas the Persian and other Iranian archers have five, and the Cappadocians as well. They have five missile attack. These guys have seven, and they're cheaper, only 360. So you know what? I might as well uh, recruit that. And in my uh, Saka guide video, I talk about uh, all the different units, Saka nobles, heavy horse archers, essentially, uh, Saka medium cavalry, Probably the worst medium cavalry in the game, but uh, due to their low attack value. But uh, you know what? They're they're okay. Mm, and then the javelin cavalry, and then Saka horse archers again with seven missile attack. Very good, very good horse archers. But uh, in any case, yeah, we're going for Alexandria. So let's end the turn and let's do this. Now, um, here's the thing. I could uh, go for the rebel settlements around me, but again, they're not that rich. And um, really, if I want to get out of debt quickly, as quickly as possible, then I've got to take Bactra. That's my number one target because that will do a couple of things for me. That One, that will cripple my early enemy, Bactria, uh, because without Bactra, Bactria is done for. It'll cripple Bactria, the early enemy, and then it'll get you out of debt at the same time. So then then you're free. So you start out at war uh, with Bactria anyway. So uh, might as well go and get them. There's no reason not to. So in any case, I like taking uh, Alexandria, Escate here, because it gives you kind of a base 
uh, to move against Bactria from. And uh, once you get the government buildings and stuff in Alexandria, then uh, you can uh, retrain a lot of units. You get access to cataphracts, um, things like that. But in any case, uh, oh, and of course, Rutadare, the capital here, the camp, it's a camp. It's a nomad camp. Uh, you see it here. Nomadic region, so it's a camp. Um, it gives you access to your nice nomadic units, the cavalry especially, and the foot archers too. But um, it also... Um, can this province cannot be converted into a regular settlement. So, um, yeah, this is a nomadic region. Cannot I cannot convert this uh, Rudtadare into a regular settlement. So uh, eventually, I will have to move the capital, indeed. But um, yeah, other than that, let's uh, keep going. Uh, so there are a few camps nearby, and of course, uh, as I mentioned in the Saka Rauka guide video that I made uh, a couple weeks ago, um, the Saka need to convert camps. Converting camps into settlements help the help the Saka um, get to the first tier of the reforms. So the first tier of the reforms, of course, in EB one. Uh, to reform the Saka, you just take Alexandria, Escate, and then you keep it for 12 or 13 turns, and then boom, you got the reforms. You become Indo-Saka, Indo-Scythian. But in EB2, the reforms process is a little more involved. So you have to convert uh, settlements. Uh, you have to uh, convert them from camps into uh, towns. And you have to uh, take these settlements. So Chach gives you a point, um, Alexandria gets you a point, Marikanda gets you a point, I believe. And then once you do that and convert one camp or two, then boom, you get the reforms. So again, you'll see what I'm talking about um, during this campaign. I've done, uh, I've done this in a test campaign before, which went very nice and it was very fun. So that's why I... Uh, wanted to do this Saka campaign, because I think not enough people talk about the Saka. They're quite a fun faction indeed. So the Bactrians have uh, Oscobara as well as Bactra at the beginning here. A uh, couple of things uh, to note. Oh, and of course uh, my goal and how Mavarga is around here. So the Bactrians have already taken it. You can see they've taken Dahiu how Mavarga. So uh, that's where the main Bactrian army is, because they don't start with that province. Uh, so um, I'm going to take Alexandria and then move against Bactra, which is uh, not that well defended. And once we take Bactra, then that leaves uh, Marakanda kind of isolated from their armies in the eastern provinces, and then I'll Take Oscobara and I'll take Hamavarga and the Bactrians will be done. So uh, in any case, when we're going for historical progression here, uh, the other thing you need at the beginning, uh, besides converting the camps and things like that, um, you need your uh, faction leader to uh, have the settled trait. So he needs to want to settle. Bactria wants a ceasefire? Yeah, they're hearing me talk about conquering Bactria and um, they're proposing a ceasefire. Um, and the way to do that is um, it might be a bit tough uh, to have your first faction leader um, do that, to have your first faction leader want to settle. But uh, in any case, um, the, the faction heir, I believe, or the one after... Uh, after that, it gets easier. Oh, what does my uh, advisor say? Time to change pastures. Meadows are no longer lush and our mighty steeds can find little to feed upon. They are marvelous creatures and usually can take care of themselves, but now is not the time to gather them in large numbers. 
It is the order of things. We should take our kin to the winter pastures by marshes and river valleys. There ice is not as thick as on the steppe, and our tribesmen have stocked foodstuffs and cereals. Let us disperse our hosts under the endless sky. This shall cut on expenses, while we all recuperate and return resplendent, like the sun traveling high over the vast blue. Yeah, go home. Okay, uh, let's take Alexandria. So, of course, uh, my host here does not have um, infantry. So once we start fighting Bactrians, you'll see um, it does take micromanagement uh, to beat the Bactrians here at the beginning. Uh, so let's uh, find Halma Varga. Yeah, there's Halma Varga. So as you can see, it says a nomaditon, so it's a camp. And the Bactrians cannot convert it. So of course, one of the nicest units the Bactrians have is the Bactrian horse archer. They're better in melee than my horse archers, but uh, their missile attack is a bit lower. And I believe they're a bit slower because they're, they're more armored. And it's a nice unit. I like them quite a bit. But uh, yeah, we're losing money. But uh, now we're besieging Alexandria, in any case. So again, the goal is to get Bactria. So let's keep it going. But, um, right, as you get more tiers of reforms, uh, that the, the first tier, the settled... Uh, the first tier that lets you become a settled faction um, that gives you access to uh, certain government buildings um, that allow you to govern settled settlements more so at the beginning here once I take Bactra it's actually going to be better for me to um, make an allied government in Bactra uh, but then in, in these other settlements, I can make uh, my own government because I'll get access to uh, my good cavalry. But in any case, I'm going to do some exploring here. Uh, so my spy, I'm going to take him down here because you do have another enemy here in the east, and that enemy is Taxila. Taxashila in um, EB2. And uh, Taxila represents the Mauryan princes that were in the western part of the empire, uh, the governors here. And uh, th those are going to be the big enemy in the second part of the campaign here once I become settled. Uh, because, of course, uh, historically, the Saka um, took India. They took parts of India, northwestern India and northern India, and became the Indo-Scythians, the Indo-Saka. So that's, um, that's, of course, why you find information about the Saka Rauka when you look up the Indo-Scythians. But, um, yeah, in any case... Uh, you get access to a lot of nice units in, um, once you take the Indian provinces. And luckily this province here, Paropamisade, and Kapisha is actually um, Alexandria Paropamisade. Once you, uh, Paropamisade counts as an Indian province. It was uh, one of the easternmost parts that Alexander conquered and founded a city in. And... Um, yeah, this is going to, be, uh, going to be a big target for me because it's uh, very easily defensible. So I don't want Taxila to take it. And um, it'll give me access to nice Indo-Scythian units that I want, uh, especially once I um, become more settled. But uh, if I take it early on before I get set with a settled trait, I might... Um, uh, I might make an ally government there. 
But uh, as you can see, uh, that province, Parapamisade, is the key to India. <clears throat> so I have to get it. Once I take that, then the way to Taxila is open. And once I take Taxila, uh, it's just a matter of time before the other Indian provinces uh, fall to me, the Indus River Valley. So, um, yeah, one more turn for Alexandria to be mine. And then I'll send my troops after Bactra. Again, you can go for Chach at the beginning. Uh, I'm not saying don't go for it. It's just I... Um, in my testing, I found that this was a better way. I actually uh, tested the Saka in, uh, with uh, large unit sizes because I know on huge it's a little more unwieldy, but huge looks nicer, especially for videos, so um, playing this on huge. But yeah, the Saka settling process is a little more difficult, a little more involved than the Parthian one, for example. With Parthia, you don't have to uh, convert camps into cities. Okay, so let's uh, ho hold, hold your horses here. Okay, everyone's looking nice. So I want to get my... Um, Uh, okay, hold on, hold on. All right, so these guys are my lancers and my cataphracts. I want to keep these guys in reserve because I don't want to have to use them. These are the horse archers. I want to keep these guys. Sorry. I want to keep these guys uh, up the middle here, constantly pelting. Uh, the enemy that's coming through. And I want to put my nobles a bit behind them as well. Turn on skirmish mode. And I want to get my... Uh, so apparently all my general's bodyguards are way over there. So actually I'll put the general's bodyguards over here to kind of flank from that side. I'll turn on skirmish mode. But uh, let me show off the general's bodyguards here. Again, a very nice unit. Oh, and these are the cataphracts. So the general's bodyguard is basically like an armored horse archer, and they've got these nice antlers. I didn't know I was playing a Santa invasion. But uh, in any case, a very nice unit. Uh, as I said in the uh, guide video, the um, Saka General's Bodyguard is not as overpowered as the one in EB1. But uh, they are quite nice. Uh, and of course, because uh, horse archers are, um, are a little underpowered or less powerful in EB2, uh, that makes them even less OP, so you really have to uh, manage your forces, you have to skirmish correctly. But uh, yeah, it's nice to see our horse archers really pounding these guys. So they have a uh, Iranian spearman here, the medium spearman. I'm running this using a post-processor, somebody told me to try out. Uh, one of my subscribers said my Medieval 2 videos weren't looking that good uh, because of the sprites and they advised that I run this. But unfortunately, I don't think my uh, setup can handle it. So uh, I'm actually going to um, stop using it soon. Um, but in any case, I'm going to pull my Lancers back a little more. Uh, let my... Um, horse archers do their worst here. But uh, as you can see, 
uh, the oh the other thing about um, the general's bodyguard in EB2 is that they're not as good at charging so in EB1 they're heavy heavy armored cataphracts and they're really good as horse archers and they're really good at charging as well and they were just so good but um oh this guy didn't go back good thing i saw that they have some hoplites here not too many yeah they're getting hit pretty hard not as hard as they would be getting hit in eb1 of course but uh, pretty hard nonetheless so let's pull our lancers even farther back Again, what you want to do here is uh, just, uh, this is an all-infantry force that the enemy is fielding here. So actually, you know what? Let me get this general's bodyguard uh, to charge at the enemy uh, archers here. These are the Persian archer spearmen uh, that are famous from EB1 and 2. I like them. But uh, they're no match for my Saka General's bodyguard. Which is kind of charging in a strange way right now. So just one guy charged. I don't know why. But in any case, it's uh, looking like... Yeah, the enemy's just coming at me. So I'm going to give more ground. Again, if you're the Saka, you just give ground. If you have the missile advantage, uh, that's all you have to do. And the enemy will uh, be destroyed by your skirmishing tactics. So these are the Saka Axemen unit. Um, not a great unit. They're just okay. They're good as garrison troops. I like their tiny shields. Okay, so our general's bodyguards are charging them there. That's good. So now let's uh, charge. Uh, this uh, Iranian medium spearman. And get him to stop uh, bothering my other general, my other generals there. I think we might uh, get them to rout here. Also, if we... Um... Okay, these guys are not firing their missiles. Get some of these horse archers over here to skirmish in the middle again. Our horse archers are doing well over there. Okay, so the enemy has hoplites there. Definitely don't want to uh, engage. Okay, let's get our uh, cavalry uh, to scatter here. Oh, I didn't want that to happen. Guys, please uh, get out. Want to keep these casualties to a minimum. To my lancers because uh, I will have to use them eventually once I face more um, Bactrian forces uh, so let's uh, oh those guys routed that's good uh, once I start facing down more uh, Bactrian troops uh, let's actually get these guys uh, to chase those guys get these guys um, to get those guys and these guys to get those guys, okay? So how are our um, troops doing here? Oh, one of my generals got killed. That stinks. How did that even happen? Okay, let's get these guys to charge as well. Ah, that really smells. Oh, 
Okay, uh, cataphracts, charge those guys. Lancers, charge those guys. And those guys should rout. No problem. Why are my horse archers not skirmishing? Come on. Yeah, you really have to micromanage because skirmishing in Medieval 2 is annoying as hell. It can be. And of course, uh, talking while managing all this doesn't help. Indeed. But, uh, okay, so I would like to uh, charge these guys, actually. But as you can see, this is how you have to fight. You have to skirmish. I should have skirmished more with my bodyguard. I thought I had an opening there, but I guess I didn't have as much of an opening as I thought I did. So let's uh, hit those guys from the back, and they should rout. I don't know why those guys haven't routed yet. Let's see this lovely charge. Okay, they're routing. Very good. This Iranian spearman is uh, just not routing. Okay, they are they are fighting to the death now. That's good. Chase them down, please, cataphracts. Yeah, we're doing well. Yeah, the enemy doesn't have too much force left here. Enemy general fallen, very good. So yeah, this didn't have to happen this way. I don't know how that general just died. Because uh, his unit is looking pretty good. But uh, yeah, just luck of the draw. Let's get our leader uh, to finish off these guys. Let's see a good charge here with my antlers. And are they going to route? Ah, oh, they didn't rout. Okay. I'll charge with my other general's bodyguard on the flank. Any other enemy unit here? Yeah, they're routing. So let's get our general uh, to hit these guys from the back. And then Alexandria will be ours. I really didn't want to lose any family members here because uh, because the unit is so good. Like it's not it's not as overpowered as the EB1 general's bodyguard, but it's such a good unit anyway. Yeah, I lost 91 of my 1,700 troops, and one of my generals was one of the casualties. So that's just bad luck. Just have to be more careful. I should have been more careful. I could have been more careful, but I wanted to uh, speed things up a bit, and I paid the price. Yeah, in EB2, if you try to rush things, you pay the price. So let's, um, let's sack it. Okay. So, um, yeah, Alexandria Escate is ours. And uh, most of our troops are just fine. So, this is, uh, so as the Saka, you get uh, two options at the beginning. Um, you get, uh, once you take a province, you get our land, or you get tributary state for an allied government. For Alexandria, it's good to go with uh, our land. And of course, I want to repair Alexander's uh, furthest 
altars, a nice wonder building. Of course, improves public order by like, oh, for only Greek factions. Or whatever, I'll keep it. I won't destroy it. Um, but uh, let's take a look at my guys here. So now my deficit is not as bad. But you know what? I can't move that much right now. So I will actually... What should I do here? Actually, if I take out if I get out of um, Alexandria and I keep let's let's say I keep a, a Lancer unit in um, let's say I keep this horse archer unit in um, Kurukand is it still happy it's still happy so you know what? Let's uh oh that I made a mistake. Whatever. Okay, it's okay. Perhaps I'll draw the Bactrians out to attack me. But uh, let's keep going. Uh, the uh, maneuvering in this part of the map is a little annoying because of the mountains and the rivers, but I mean that's accurate. It was annoying for Alexander too when he came up here. Okay. So we've got a big Bactrian army in front of us. Let's, let's attack him. Let's do this. So this, uh, this is going to be a tough battle. So I've got slightly less troops than I had before. And uh, the enemy army is a lot bigger than the one I just faced. But once I get this Bactrian army, I think that's going to break the back of the Bactrians here. So actually in my uh, test campaigns as the Saka, um, the Bactrians kept their big army in Halma Varga, and I didn't really have to face a big Bactrian army until it was too late for them. So um, another nice, nice look at this unit here. But in any case, um, I want to keep my generals together. Again, I want to keep my lancers uh, as reserve in the back. I want to uh, Skirmish against the enemy as long as I can. Let's keep the horse archers uh, together. Hopefully they don't do uh, silly things like they did last time. And uh, the nobles. I guess I'll keep the nobles on the right. And you know what? Two of the generals stay with the nobles on the right. Turn on the skirmish mode. And for the nobles, yeah, they, they all have skirmish mode. So let's go. I, I use skirmish mode because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm talking and playing at the same time. So it's, it's hard. It's hard to do both at the same time, to skirmish, micromanage, all that at the same time. So it seems like uh, they want to take this hill here. Actually, I'll put my Lancers a bit closer. Now these Horse Archers, let's get my Horse Archers to skirmish from the front. Get these two units to skirmish from uh, the left flank here. Start firing on their slower units like those Pantodapoi phalangites. So these are uh, Dahe Javelin uh, cavalrymen. 
so my horse archers are better skirmishers than them. They have to be really close before they can throw javelins. And the javelins are not that good either. I would, I would buff the javelins a bit, personally, but um, it's okay. They're not that bad, actually. Javelin cav is not that bad. Other people are a little more down on the javelin cav than I am, but it's okay. What would be very nice is if I uh, was able to get draw their general out and uh, ambush him with uh, some of my cavalry. But yeah, we've done a little bit of damage over there. That's good. What would be nice is if I could get their general to like go, in f go over here where I can just charge him with my lancers that are in reserve. That would be quite nice. So uh, let's um, move these horse archers a bit closer. So yeah, again, horse archers are not overpowered in EB2. You have to really manage them. But I am doing some good damage here. It's not like the missiles are not potent at all. So these are Dahe horse archers, indeed, but they haven't been able to do too much damage to me because they're firing from low, uh, from below. The enemy general, uh, he's well armored, so he has not taken uh, too many casualties here just yet. Seems like we're skirmishing fairly well. Uh, the enemy cavalry there is... Okay, they didn't catch any of my guys in this farmland here. That's good. I definitely want to uh, scatter the enemy forces because they are uh, bigger than me. But you know what? The enemy general is vulnerable. He doesn't know what he's doing. So, Noble Cav, charge the general. Cataphracts, come charge the general. Generals, charge the general. Everyone charge the general. We caught him. There we go. Now let's beat, let's get this general, ambush him. And then we'll, uh, that'll really help. Okay, so the enemy is moving against uh, my uh, cataphracts here with these cavalrymen. You know what? Lancers, go get those Dahe horse archers. Other lancers, get the Arakosian cavalry. And you lancers, I think that's good enough. You lancers stay in reserve. Come over here to support uh, just in case. Okay, we routed the general. We've got to uh, get him. Okay, so they are they're hitting our cataphracts. I I guess that's they they drew my cataphracts out there, which is unfortunate. Uh, oh, I wasn't able to get the general. Let's get their skirmisher cav at least. Okay, my cataphracts are in a bit of a pickle. Let's get my horse archers into position to skirmish. Come on. Our lancers are doing well. Did we route these guys yet? Not just yet. Let's hit them from the other side with the horse archers. Let's 
Where are the other generals? They're down here. Okay, generals, you come do some flankage. Okay, I've got to support my cataphracts here. I can retrain them. I'm not that concerned. Uh, it's more important that I defeat this army completely. So let's um, turn off skirmish mode here. Let's maneuver our cavalry to crush these enemy troops. So they've got um, Bactrian skirmishers there. A decent unit. So let's hit them from the back. Okay, we routed those skirmishers. Very nice. Now let's route those other skirmishers. And then we'll hit the main Bactrian force from the back. Oh boy, Pantodapoi. It's not what I wanted. We've got to uh, get these troops in there. Okay. Cavalry, come forth. You guys hit the Saka archers. You guys hit the Parthian archers. You guys are doing your job. You guys hit the Scythian guys from the back. Uh, my cataphracts are really hitting them hard, but taking damage as well. Okay, generals, uh, hit the enemy archer spearmen. Hit the other enemy archer spearmen. Hit the enemy general from the side. I think we're doing well here. We've only lost 10% of our forces. And the enemy is quite scattered. Ah, my lancers. Get out. Okay, come up here. My cataphracts are really taking one for the team here. Can we hit these guys from the side? Yes, we can. Very good. Did we hit these guys from the back well? Yes, we did. Pantodapoi. You know what, guys? Hit the Arakosian Cav. They're not that good in melee, so you can really do damage. Yes, you can. Yes, yes, we are doing it. Please get the general. If you get the general, then that'll really help. Okay, we're causing a mass rout here. Very good. Cataphracts, chase down those guys. You did well, Cataphracts. You held off the whole army until I was able to do a massive flank maneuver. Okay, Pantodepoi routing. Very nice indeed. Dahe horse archers and javelin cav routing. Very good, let's chase them. Okay, lancers. Chase uh, these uh, Iranian archer spearmen. Okay, and the enemy's got this unit of phalangites here that are just walking around. So, uh, Saka horse archers, let's go and let's start firing on these guys. 
My noble cavalry are doing well. Everyone is uh, pretty good. Basically, only my cataphracts took a bunch of damage. You know, let's charge down the hill at these Pantodopoi. I might just get them to rout on contact because uh, they've lost pretty much the whole army. Chase down these Dahe, please. So it seems like they are confused. They're not really holding their spears in the right way. And will they rout? Go get those guys. Okay, seems like their general was able to escape, unfortunately. General, uh, come down here. Okay, we got him. We got him. Now let's chase him down. Nice battle. We only lost 16% uh, of our troops, and uh, we got almost 100% of them. So that was actually quite good indeed. And I believe we are chasing down the rest of the enemy units. So that's good. And the Pantodopoi... We've got 99% of the enemy. Very nice battle indeed. Quite decisive. But I think the general escaped. But in any case, as you can see, that was kind of a demonstration of uh, how to fight as the Saka. So if you're facing an infantry army, uh, at least at the beginning of the campaign, because eventually, as I said, you get access to a much better um, troops. Uh, can we ransom them? Ransom rejected. Well, enemy army routes. I guess we did get the enemy general. So, uh, yeah, let's go for Bactra. Just some enemy infantry. Uh, yeah, let's get them. Let's get them quickly. But as you can see, if uh, again, if you're fighting infantry heavy armies, uh, you just have to scatter them. Make them scatter and chase after you. A willy-nilly. And then you can kind of isolate some of their troops and just swarm them. So that's what you've got to do. Okay, so uh, I've got these uh, troops. General's bodyguard. You know what? I think my general's bodyguard is going to be what I use in this battle. But you know what? Perhaps I'll, I'll just try to... Uh... Are they running away? I want to do this. Let's uh, try and chase him down here. Hit them as m much with our missiles as we can. Okay, guys, uh, get get a little closer. Horse archers, uh, you know what, horse archers, try to block them. And uh, nobles.
Are you gonna get into a fight right there? Nobles, you uh, try to head them off as well. The Parthians seem to have gotten tired. But yeah, it actually seems like the enemy is coming back to fight here. So actually, let's oblige. Let's oblige and let's charge down the mountain with uh, my other cavalry. And I think uh, they'll be toast. So you guys hit the hoplites. And you guys hit the uh, archers. Let's take a nice look at this charge down the mountain. Very nice indeed. And um, so yeah, you guys, uh, you charge the hoplites too. And you guys hit the uh, Parthian archers. Seems like uh, the hoplites are going to be done here in just a bit. Oh, these hoplites are fighting hard. 90, 88, 86. Okay, seems like they're they're going down. Please, uh, hope, hopefully nothing bad happens here. But yeah, actually, since you can retrain everything, um, nothing is... Uh, it's not a huge deal at right at the beginning, but you do want to take back Tria. That's... That's the minimum of what you have to do here. Okay, and they're done. Enemy general fallen. I was so scared that that was uh, it was a noble death. I was so happy uh, when I saw that it said enemy general fallen. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Um, all right. So let's, uh, can I ransom them? Okay, I mean, it's not much, but. All right, so let's go after Bactria. And yeah, just one more turn until Bactria. So it's not like I waste a turn here. Uh, Sogdi is a good province too, but I want Bactria. All right, and uh, everything is uh, looking pretty good. Someone came of age, right? Yeah, this guy. So you take uh, this archer unit and let's go down to uh, Alexandria, Escate. And let's keep this going. Now, at the minimum for this episode, I uh, showed you guys a uh, nice heroic victory against the main Bactrian army. So now hopefully that has broken the back of the remainder of uh, the Bactrian forces here and I can just take Bactria. 
Okay, uh, he looks good. He's in the pink. He's smart. Yeah, I like him. I like him. Let's get him to come too. So you come too. Why is this guy's movement so low? No, it's it's not low. I don't know why it seemed like it was low. Okay. Um, retinue expands, alliance announced, marriage celebrations, Q stalled. Okay, so let's uh, take Bactria. Seven turns, not too many. But uh, if I know the enemy correctly, then I think what they will try to do is um, sally out. And they do have quite a few troops here, including these elite Bactrian guards. The, that's a nice unit. But I think most of their forces uh, should be defeatable. Okay. Oh, so they're actually reinforcing uh, on the battlefield here. Trying to lift the siege. So I think, uh, I think we're in a pretty good position here. It's going to be uh, similar to the battle we just fought. Uh, let's start deployment. It's going to be similar to the battle we just fought. Again, I'll put uh, two generals on the right, two generals on uh, the left. I guess that's okay. Horse archers I'll put in the middle. Again, the horse archers, even though uh, they're not that good in terms of their uh, melee ability, um, if you swarm a weakened enemy infantry unit with a bunch of horse archers, that's devastating. It's devastating for the morale of the enemy. Okay, oh, I, I didn't uh, finish setting up. But you know, let's actually finish off these guys with these uh, noble troops and I'll have my horse archers Um, skirmish against the Bactrians that are coming from there. And I'll have my Lancers uh, set up in reserve uh, in a better location, safer location there. So let's start pelting them with uh, art, with, uh, you know, oh, oh, that's not what I wanted. Oh, 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 that's not what I wanted. I forgot I had turned off skirmish mode for those guys. Okay, they didn't take any damage. That's okay. Okay, Lancers get into position. Horse archers are skirmishing. Very good. Okay, the enemy, they've got Arakosian Cav. They've got uh, Bactrian skirmishers. It'll be important to get as many of the enemy as possible because um, and the general as well. Because I believe there is a garrison script on Bactra since it's a faction capital. And uh, I don't want... I don't want to have to uh, deal with a ton more enemy units. I can beat them if I have to, but um, I'll just uh, lose more forces, that's all. Okay, so again, we're forcing them to scatter. Bactrian horse archers. Lovely unit. Kind of like Greek horse archers, very nice. Um, okay, so these guys are almost done, I think. 
You really going after my Lancers? Let's set up over there. Okay, guys, just charge these guys. I'm tired of them. Okay, now you guys... You guys go into skirmish mode, too. Go skirmish. And I think these guys will route... Yeah, the Parthian archers routed. Now you guys charge the back of the hoplites. Yeah, and these guys are done. Okay, the Bactrian horse archers are not able to compete with our guys here. Oh, so the Bactrians are coming uh, forward with gusto. It's not going to help them, unfortunately. Let's move our... Uh, Lancers back. Okay. Nice work. So you guys come skirmish too. Yeah, those guys are skirmishing as well. Very nice. Okay, so we're really doing a lot of damage to their Aurakosians, who are lightly armored. I like the Aurakosian Cav because they have nice colorful shields. And I like the nice blue. It's not like a Dodger blue, so that's good. And they have these other shields too that are cool. Okay, very good. The other thing about the Arakosian Cav is that they have 7 attack, which is actually pretty high for a Javelin Cavalry unit, which is uh, one of the reasons I, why I like them, for skirmishing and then flanking purposes. Okay, so these Bactrians, they are heavily armored, but they're going down slowly but surely here. Okay, the main Bactrian force. Okay, Lancers, uh, let's move back a little more to this hill. Oh, I can't. Okay, let's just move back anyway. Over here. Okay, so it seems like, um, what's the enemy doing here? It seems like they're trying to reform. They've lost 23%, I've lost 4%. Ratios are looking good. What's the enemy general trying to do here? Okay, so uh, you guys charge at the enemy general. Nobles, charge at the enemy general. Other general, get into position. Their general's bodyguard, uh, the Somatophilakis, they are good. They're definitely better than um, the Nabataean general's bodyguard, for example, that we saw in the Hayastan campaign, but uh, they're not as good as my guys, indeed. And they're getting roasted. Enemy general fallen, Diodotos. There we go. Let's take him out. Okay, and, um, yeah, seems like he's done. His goose has been cooked. Okay, the Aurakosians are coming. So let's uh, get the Aurakosians. Mm 
No, guys, I want you to skirmish. Oh, come on. Okay, Lancers, uh, come back here then. I don't want to engage with Hoplites with my uh, Lancer Cav. Please run. Okay. Okay, uh, charge these skirmishers. And the nobles uh, will move here and uh, start skirmishing with their infantry. So what does the enemy have left here? Oh, they've caught my general. How dare you? It would be nice if I could flank these guys. Okay, you guys... Hit the back tree and hoplites. Or the... Uh, watch McCollets. Uh, horse archers. Why are these guys losing troops? I don't understand. Um, okay, so... Um, Okay, those guys are routing very nicely. Okay. Let's start to hit these guys from the back. Okay, we're doing a good job chasing these guys. These guys are routing too. Let's get the hoplites to route. So we get those hoplites to route. Uh, this is going to be nice indeed. You guys get those hoplitai haploi. Oh, charge the enemy, charge the enemy. You guys charge them too. I think we can make them route on contact. Their morale seems uh, quite low here. Okay, hoplites are routing too. We got them. Yep, we got them. Charge, please. Very good. Any enemy unit that's not routing? Oh, these guys. the Bactrian guard hoplites. These are the elite of the elite. But they are scattered, and I think we can um, charge them and get them to rout. Are we hitting them from the back? Yes, we are. And we got them. Um, very nice. Chase, chase, please, chase. Okay. Very good. 90. Again, I think we're going to get to 99% enemy casualties again. Before this is all said and done, oh, they have a unit there. Go get them. They have a Pantotopoi who's caught in this farm. He's rethinking his life. Record scratch. You might be wondering how I ended up here. Kangaroo Jack kicks him out of there.
Come on. I don't know what to do about that guy. Let's just end the battle. Actually, I have an idea. Get him with a bow and arrow. Can we get him? Yep. <laughs> okay, not a problem. Heroic victory. So, hopefully this means we have Bactra. That would be very nice. Bactra is really rich because it has very nice mines. Um, I think uh, Bactra, Armenia, those two provinces have super good mines. Very nice indeed. That'll really uh, get us out of our um, ish, uh, economic depression here. Ransom? Ransom rejected? Okay. Sack Bactra? Let's uh, sack it. I need the money. I don't like exterminating anyway. It bothers me. Okay, so Bactra's mine. We have captured the capital of our enemies. Q stalled. But now uh, we have profits. Very good indeed. And Oscobara is not well defended. Marakanda is uh, defended better. So actually, it might be prudent uh, to go after Marakanda because they are isolated there. So let's get our generals uh, to come to Kurukand, Alexandria Escate. And our camp is good. Bactra is under our control. It's very nice. Let's, um, at least for now, let's go with a tributary state in uh, Bactra, an allied government. And I think we have time for maybe another turn or two. Uh, but in any case, uh, this is definitely how you want to start uh, your Saka campaign, or okay, it's not definitely how you want to start it, but it's how I start it. Um, and as you can see, Bactria's, Bactria's mine, and I've got profit. So everything looks really bad at the start of the campaign, but you know, you could go and grind it out against these nomads up here, or you can just go straight f for Bactria. And uh, going straight for Bactria, again, is economically better better for you. So uh, I think that's actually enough for this first episode here. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll do a couple more episodes and then I might finish this campaign in a stream. Uh, because it seems like the later episodes in uh, Let's Plays don't get that much attention, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, so... Uh, our goal, our next goal, our goal for the next episode will be to um, take a Marakanda, which is the new Bactrian capital, and it has basically the most of the Bactrian forces remaining. Once I take Marakanda, then I'll go for Oscobara. And then, um, boom, the rest of the Bactrians will be stuck in this nomad camp in Halmavarga. So, uh, yeah. I'll see you guys in the next one.